next on the Gospel Bill Show. Gentlemen, the reason that I've called you in here today is, well, we need to discuss the services that we're having here at church. Glory! Woo! Yes! 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 Glory! It's the Gospel Bill Show, featuring Gospel Bill, his sidekick, Nicodemus, Miss Lana, good old Elmer Barnes, and the entire Dry Gulch Gang. All right, guys, what'll it be today? Well, I really am hungry. What you gonna have, Elmer? Well, I think I'll have the Blue Plate Special. Blue Plate Special. Sounds good to me. Make it two of them. Excellent choice. Two Blue Plate Specials. Now, what do you guys have to drink? How about a cup of coffee? I'll make it two. Two coffees. Good. Okay, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to ask for 15% on the tips today because I didn't do very good yesterday, okay? Okay! Guess you got us over a barrel on that one. <laughs> Elmer, you going to that special seminar we're having at the church this weekend? Well, what special seminar? We're having a three-day seminar with Reverend Nestor Blaster. Master Blaster. Boy, but that'll be hard for the pastor to say. <laughs> yeah, but he's going to be teaching on the subject of praise and worship. And we all need to know more about that special subject. Oh, we sure do. Yeah. Blue plate specials for two. Oh, thank you, True Lou. Elmer, this food is blue. I noticed. I think I'll just wait for the coffee. Okay, here's your coffee. Yeah. Uh, uh, Miss Trulu, this, this coffee is blue, too. Well, what'd you expect? It's a blue plate special. Well, sure is Miss Trudelou's cooking. In her own unique way. Good morning, Miss Lana. Could you send this telegram off for me, please? Oh, I sure can. And by the way, are you ready for our special seminar on praise and worship this weekend? Oh, I am. I just love to hear good teaching. Uh, by the way, do you know this Reverend uh, Nestor Blester personally? Well, no, I don't. But he comes very highly recommended to us by Parson Larry Lardmore down in Alkali Flats. Oh, he's been to his church. No, not exactly. Uh, Pastor Lardmore just heard some very good things about him. Oh, uh, well, I'm sure it's going to be good. Uh, is there anything I can help you with? Yes, Miss Lana, I'd really appreciate it if you would pray and intercede that God would have his way in these services. You've got it. I'll do it. Thanks a lot, Miss Lana. You're welcome. Now here's a critter that looks like a lot of fun, the California sea lion. He's called that because he lives off the coast of California in the waters of the Pacific Ocean. I suppose that if he lived off the coast of Iowa, he'd be called an Iowa sea lion. <laughs> oh well, enough of that. Let's find out more about this wonderful animal that God created. Sea lions are members of the seal family, and though their name might sound ferocious, the sea lion hunts only for fish and octopus. It does have only sharp pointed teeth, which means that it cannot chew its food. So it swallows some small fish whole. Oh, I'd get in big trouble if I didn't chew my food. The sea lion's body is shaped like a torpedo. This makes for great ease in swimming, but out of the water, sea lions cannot move quickly. Their sleek bodies and fin-like appendages are most effective in the water. Other than man, their natural enemies are the killer whales and sharks. If I was a sea lion, I think I would prefer to live in a zoo. There I could enjoy a life of ease without having to keep an eye out for jaws. Though they spend a great deal of time in the water, sea lions are actually mammals. This means that they must breathe air with lungs just like people. The sea lion is warm-blooded and gives birth to live babies and doesn't hatch eggs. It can close its nostrils for underwater swimming, too. The sea lion actually has four legs, but the leg bones above the ankles are buried inside its body. The parts of the leg outside the body, including the feet, form the animal's flippers. The sea lion's front flippers are longer than his back flippers. This means that these powerful front flippers are especially helpful in swimming. This sea lion reminds me of our citizenship in heaven. The born-again Christian is a child of God whose real home is heaven, though he lives on this earth. 
The sea lion may live in the water, but he must be there above the surface, just like all other mammals. Though we live in the world, we're not of the world, and don't you ever forget it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's so good to have you with us this evening as we begin our seminar on praise and worship. Our special guest this evening is Reverend Nestor Blester. Now, I don't know Reverend Blester personally, but he comes very highly recommended to us from Reverend Larry Lardmore in Alkali Flats. Let's all give a warm welcome to Reverend Blester as he comes. Hallelujah! So wonderful to be here in your nice town of Dry Gulch. Before we get started this evening, ladies and gentlemen, with our seminar on worship, I would like to introduce to you my colleague and our book table worker and personal disciple, Brother Crony Follows. Brother Follows, would you please hold up our anointed t-shirt at this time? Now, we would like everyone to get a t-shirt on your way out at our book table. How many of you brought your Bibles this evening? Hallelujah! <coughs> but never mind, because tonight, as we begin our seminar on worship, I want you to forget everything you've ever heard on worship. I got to admit, that's one of the most different sermons I ever heard preached in my whole life. Well, yeah, I mean, I've never heard anyone teach that the true way you worship God is to shut your eyes real tight and jump up and down. And I've never heard you worship by clapping your hands as fast as you can. Did you see the way all those people were acting at the end of the service thinking they was worshiping God? I've never been in a worship service like that in my life. <gasps> oh! Elmer, what in the world do you think you're doing? Well, I'm just worshiping God like Reverend Nestor Blaster taught us. Well, jumping up and down with your eyes closed like that, you're going to run into somebody and hurt them. Well, that's right, Elmer. That's dangerous. Excuse me, Miss Trude Lou. I'm going to go talk to Pastor Wesley and see what he thinks about this whole thing. Uh, Parson Wesley? Oh, oh, excuse me, Parson. I didn't mean to interrupt your study time. Well, that's quite all right, Nicodemus. What can I do for you? Well, I, I sure hope I ain't talking out of turn here, but you see, me and some of the folks was over at the cafe this morning, we was talking about that meeting last night, and we just had some real questions about what that man preached on, and just wanted to know, what do you think about it? Well, Nicodemus, I've been praying and studying my New Testament all morning long, and I can't find anywhere in here where it talks about worshiping God by closing your eyes real tight, or clapping your hands real fast, or jumping up and down real quick. Huh. Well, does that mean that the Bible teaches it's not important to worship God? Oh, no, 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 no. The Bible teaches it's very important to worship God, but the New Testament tells us that the best way to do that is to worship God with our mouths. You mean that other stuff's not in there at all? It's not in here anywhere. Huh. Well, does that mean you're going to shut this meeting down? Well... Nicodemus, I've given that some careful consideration and much prayer. And I've decided that I'm going to give Reverend Blester one more opportunity. But if he's teaching things that are not according to the New Testament and can't be supported with the Scripture, as the pastor of this congregation, I have a responsibility to let the people know about it. Boy, I sure am glad to hear that, Parson. It's good to have a real pastor in this here church. Well, I'll see you later. Good day, Nicodemus. Well, wasn't that just a great meeting we had, Brother Follows? Great meeting, great meeting. I tell you, it's so wonderful to be able to flow into the depths of the spiritual truths that we're teaching, which, of course, are far beyond the Bible. I believe the people were extremely blessed. Oh, yes, I believe they were blessed, but, you know, I'm not so sure that pastor was in total agreement with everything you were saying. Well, now, Brother Follows, don't you allow that to bother you none. Sometimes these pastors are a little bit slow in grabbing a hold of these deep spiritual truths that we're teaching. Uh, give him a few days, and, and I believe he'll come around and get into the flow uh, with us. By the way, the offering we had was tremendous. <laughs> True sign, sure sign, that the blessing of God is, is upon this meeting. 
Whatever you say, Reverend Lester, whatever you say. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to enter into the depths of our seminar of worship. Now, to dare to go into these depths is a thing for very few. But we shall begin by saying glory. And repeat it faster and faster with our arms getting involved and our legs beginning to be in motion as well in the flow of worship. Let's all stand together, and I will lead you into this place. Simply imitate me. Glory, 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 glory. What do you think about glory, this? Nicodemus, I'm going to have to have a glory, talk with this glory, man tomorrow. Glory, 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 Miss Lana, I need to order some supplies. I'm sorry, Nicodemus, I can't hear you. I said I need to order some supplies. What are all these people doing? They're acting on Reverend Blester's sermon on praise and worship. Well, Parson Wesley says he's going to talk to Reverend Blester. That's good. Well, I better get out of the way before I get hurt. Gentlemen, the reason that I've called you in here today is, well, we need to discuss the services that we're having here at church. Ah, yes. Well, uh, isn't it wonderful to receive new revelation from God? Yeah, Reverend Blaster's real good at teaching new stuff nobody else has ever heard before. Amen. Amen. Oh. Reverend, that's the exact reason that I need to talk to you. You see, I've been studying in the New Testament, and I can't find one place in there that supports the teaching that you've been teaching my people. Oh, well, 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 uh, that's because the things that uh, I'm teaching, Parson, uh, are not found in the Bible. Not found in the Bible? What are you talking about? Well, I'm, I'm far beyond the Bible. I'm receiving new things from above. Far beyond the Bible? Then what are you doing carrying one with you? Well, you can't be a preacher in this day and age with, without a Bible. Well, that's the very reason that I'm forced to do what I'm about to do. And what's that? We're closing this meeting down today. Closing the meeting town? Why, well, we've only had two meetings thus far. I know it, and it's going to take me at least two months to straighten out the mess that you've gotten my congregation into. But can't you see the, the blessing of God on the meeting? I don't see the blessing of God anywhere in these services. Well, well, now, look at the offerings. Uh, they've been enormous. Reverend Blester, big offerings don't have one thing to do with the blessing of God. <clears throat> well... If you are so close-minded as to not receiving new revelation from heaven, <laughs> so be it. Hmm. Come on, fellows, Let, let's get out of this one-horse town. They're just not ready for our new revelations. Oh, excuse me, Reverend Blester. <clears throat> what, what is it? Well, I've been studying my Bible, and I can't find anything in here that tells me to do what you told me to do when you told me to do it. What'd you say? What would he say? What'd you say? There's nothing in my Bible that supports your teaching. Oh, well, well, son, don't, don't you understand that parts of that book are old and, and outdated? Outdated? Mm-hmm. Well, right here, in the words of Jesus, it says in Matthew 24, 35, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Reverend Blister. Well, what is it? I'm not so sure we should disagree with the words of Jesus. Oh, oh shut up, fellows. Let's get out of this town. He needs to read his Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to apologize to you this morning for letting this wrong teaching on praise and worship get into our congregation. The Bible teaches us that we're to know those who labor among us. And I just took Brother Lardmore's recommendation that, that Reverend Blester was an all right man of God. I missed it. I made a mistake. But I've learned my lesson. The Bible teaches us 
Jesus said in John chapter 4 and verse 24 that the Father was looking for those who would worship Him in spirit and in truth. You see, true worship in the New Testament comes from our spirits as we respond to the Lord. And the New Testament teaches us that the proper way to do that is to lift our voice and our mouths in praise and worship to God and to lift up holy hands to Him. Let's all stand and do that right now. Father, we love you. We praise and we worship you. We magnify your holy name. We love you, Jesus. We praise you. Okay. Let's begin with Vaughn and Ann Place. Ready? Go. Okay, that's enough. And next, let's do John Payne Jacks. Ready? Go. All right, all right, what is this? Both of you are in the church, and you're trying to worship God, ain't you? But Nicodemus... Don't but Nicodemus me, Elmer. That just shows me you didn't pay a bit of attention to what the pastor preached on on Sunday. But Nicodemus... No, but Nicodemus, Miss Trudelou, what's this crazy thing on your head? I can already tell I'm going to have to get my Bible out and teach both of you what the pastor preached on Sunday. But, but Nicodemus... Nicodemus... Well, what is it? We're not worshiping God. You're, you're not worshiping God? No, you silly cowboy. We just started a weekly aerobics class so we could get in better shape. And from the looks of your tummy, it would do you good to join. <laughs> Ready? Go! Push, push, push. Run at me, Push, push, push. It's very important that you learn to praise and worship God the right way. Because praise and worship can be a weapon when the devil comes against you. You say, Nicodemus, how does that work? Well, you see over in Acts chapter 16, the Bible tells us a story about two fellows that worked for God. Their names were Paul and Silas. And Paul and Silas had been out preaching and doing good things, telling people about Jesus. But you know what? The enemy came against them. The devil did it. He stirred up some people. They came and captured Paul and Silas. They beat them on the back with rods. They stuck them, the Bible says, down in the innermost dungeon. And Paul and Silas were in big trouble. Now, you know, I bet you Paul and Silas for a little while wanted to get depressed. I bet they wanted to say bad things. I bet they wanted to say, I wonder why this happened to us. But they didn't do that because they knew about their weapon. The Bible says at midnight, in Acts chapter 16, verse 25, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed okay. and sang praises. The now, they didn't feel like the doing that because Lord whenever you've been beat up and stuck down in jail like that, you don't feel like praising God. But they ignored their feelings. They began to lift their hands and they began to sing praises unto God and worship the Lord. Well, the Bible says that the prisoners even heard them singing. They were doing it so loud. And that song went to the prisoners. It went up through the, the roof of that jail cell and then it went up into the heavens through the stratosphere, through the ionosphere, through all those other spheres up there until that song that they were singing reached the throne of God. And here's God sitting on his throne. And God says, wait a minute, tells one of the angels, you know what, I, I think I hear a song. And maybe that angel said, well, Lord, yeah, you hear a song. There's, there's music going on up here all the time. Everybody praises and worships you up here. And God says, no, 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 this song's different. This song's coming from the earth. This is a song of one of the redeemed saints, and they're in trouble, and they're praising me. And God began to get excited about that. And maybe God began to move a little bit with that song. Maybe even God began to tap his foot a little bit. And the Bible says that heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. And as God began to tap his foot, that jail cell began to shake. It began to quake. Paul and Silas just kept on praising God and all of a sudden that prison door flung open and the jail cell just busted apart. And Paul and Silas walked out and they obtained deliverance because they made up their mind to praise and worship God in times of trouble. You know what? 
when trouble comes against you, no matter how tough it looks, no matter how hard it looks, you need to remember that you have a God that loves you. You have a God that sent His Son, Jesus, to this earth. He loved you so much. And because of that, you can lift your hands and begin to worship Him. And the power of God will begin to flow. And no matter what kind of trouble you're in, God will bring you deliverance because you know how to praise and worship His name. People all over the world in different countries try to reach out to God through different rituals of praise and worship because they want to touch God. In this one country, people get together and they begin to clap their hands. And they'll clap them harder and harder and faster and faster because they think if they do that, then God's going to hear them. Well, in another country, they've got cows wandering all over the country, see. 
and people are starving to death. I mean, they don't have enough to eat, but they won't kill those cows because it's against their religious principles, and they won't do that. And there's even some countries that they worship these little statues, and they'll rub this belly of this statue because they think they can get close to God. You know, there's nothing wrong with, with rubbing your belly as long as your own belly, but you can't worship God by rubbing a belly or, or not killing a cow or clapping your hands real fast. The Bible says over in John chapter 4, in fact, Jesus said these words, that the way to worship Him is to do it in spirit and in truth. That means to do it according to what the Bible says and to do it with a pure spirit. Now you say, Nicodemus, how can you know your spirit's pure? Well, you see, everybody's spirit at some time or another gets messed up. It gets messed up with this thing called sin. That's when you do wrong things. And everybody at one time or another, they do something wrong. And the only way you can get a pure spirit is to ask Jesus to come into your heart and he makes your heart brand new when you do that, when you sincerely mean it. You say, hey, well, how can I do that? Well, if you would like to do that right now and you believe that Jesus died for your sins, that he was raised from the dead, you can do it with me right now. Let's pray this prayer together if you really mean it. Say, Father God, I believe that Jesus died for all my sins. And Jesus, right now, I really mean it. I ask you to come into my heart to make me a brand new creature. Thank you, Jesus, for making me brand new. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me and you really and truly meant it, then Jesus Christ came into your heart and he cleaned up your spirit and made you brand new. You say, well, I don't feel any different. Well, that's because he didn't change your body. He changed you on the inside, in your heart, in your spirit. And now God's power resides within you. And now you need to read your Bible and you need to lift your hands and worship him. And when you do that, God is listening to every word you said because you're a new creature. Reverend Lester's real good at teaching new stuff nobody else has ever heard before.